Good afternoon, my name is Paul Mason. I'm a member of the Warwick's, sorry, the Royal Warwick's reenactment group. Today we're going to be talking about the kid that was carried by the British soldier on D Day and what he needed to survive. So, most important piece of kit the British soldier carries the mug one pint. Also, of course, his mess tins, his tea ration, and 48 hour worth of ration packs in the compost style. Although the British Army did prefer to issue food as fresh as possible as it was cheaper. Also carried the wash kit, your housewife, which contained your materials for mending your uniform, sewing your, and sorting out your socks, and what have you. A mirror, often supplied to, from civilian use, bar of soap in there, knife, fork and spoon, the spoon often carried in the jacket, so not in, in part of, as part of the pack. Toothpaste, toothbrush, toothpaste and your shaving kit. Obviously you had to shave daily as part of your health, what today we call health and safety, because of course it would be carried you'd need to uh, shave so your respirator fitted correctly. Foot powder, you need to look after your feet, you do a lot of walking, marching. Sterilisation, to sterilise your water. Two bottles, one to get rid of the horrible things and the other to get rid of the horrible taste. And effectively, what is the same size as a tea towel, but that is actually your towel for drying yourself. Cigarettes. Boiled sweets, this soldier has scrounged one from a 14-man uh, ration pack. The tea ration, which is um, a mixture of tea, milk and sugar, so it's all pre-packed. Cigarettes, well, they still you know, talk for themselves. And the emergency ration. Uh, it's a form of fortified chocolate that would have been issued or used only upon the orders of an officer. So if you're, emergency, you're using your emergency ration, then things have definitely gone down the toilet and was disappearing somewhere into the sewerage system. A jumper, camp comforter, spare underwear, gloves, socks, also would be inside your small pack. The water bottle, which I've placed here for the time being, was originally designed to go in the small pack, but they realised during the war there were other bits to go in there, so this was later moved so it was hung off the body. <coughs> this item here is actually uh, a, life, a life vest. And here we see the respirator anti-gas light with the demisting outfit, um, outfit and the uh, um, anti-chemical uh, brain just gone blank, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eye shields, you'd have those in the pack, and the filter would, of course, be fitted onto the side. Um, very modern design, in fact. Looks remarkably like the S10 that I'm yeah. used to. Yeah, yeah. Um, same as the S6. Yeah. And of course these will be continued to use all the way up. Um, you, you see them in the very early films of, of Northern Ireland. Yeah. Okay, so, then, ladies and gentlemen, the other item is this item activity. here. This is the anti-gas cape. It's called described as a cape, but it's actually Do you recognise this car, George? It's actually a small a small cope. A uh, small small coat. It smells of linseed oil. <laughs> Did they talk to you about like parallel parking right. or anything? Because it doesn't look very healthy. And this no, is what it looks like after a long time. <laughs> I can tell. I think you've now the webbing themselves, uh, yes, because two pouches, I'm assuming water bottle carrier, entrenching tomb carrier, and a bayonet frog with a bayonet um, fitted. Um, 50 rounds of ammunition, and usually just based for two grenades. Either the Mills type or the later Bakelite, or indeed a smoke grenade, which in actual fact is white phosphorus. So you can't use those today. Flung across your body, you'd also carry a further 50 rounds, which 
you may or may not have taken 10 rounds out to supply for your own, own, um, own weapon. Two magazines um, were also carried because you were basically carrying weapons for your Bren gun, which is light support weapon of the unit. So all the, all the troops carried those. Dubbing and a brush so you keep your boots dubbing. Not only keeping them dry and your not feet from stopping them getting trench foot, but also as part of the anti-gas respirator, uh, anti-gas system. Like your cape, your feet, would, your boots would be needed to be protected against any chemical attack. Okay. Although it never happened, they were always prepared for it. Finally, as I said, the, the, the bayonet, which you can see on, on already on the end of the rifle here, uh, entrenching tool and entrenching tool cover. These pieces would actually be kept by many soldiers inside the entrenching tool cover. It's in a space where you had space for them. You'd also carry a large shovel because that can dig a bigger hole. And of course, your rifle, the number four in 303 calibre. So there you go. And if I stand here, I'll tell you what, I'll hold on to that. <laughs> and if I turn around, you can see how this kit would have been worn on the British Army. Okay. Now, I'm a fairly large chap, I'm probably about twice the size of the average soldier, so imagine what it would be like for them carrying all this, because you needed to carry it, because if, should you just happen to be pulled back, have an inspection, you'd lost any bits, you were in trouble. <laughs>